Hey everyone, I'm Steve from Number 12 Cider and this is my partner Colin. Hey, we're here to talk a little bit today about yeast. Uh, yeast is something that we use to make cider. It's one of the most important components, right? Absolutely. We've talked about, Steve, from the beginning on these videos that there are two main factors that determine how your cider is going to come out in the end. Uh, one of them, of course, is the apple varieties that are chosen, which is important. And the second one, maybe equally as important, some people might think even more, is your selection of which yeast you're going to use. Yeah, and a fun experiment, if you haven't done it at home already, is you take the same juice uh, and you, you ferment that juice in three or four different containers with three or four different yeasts. And you'll be shocked and amazed, if you haven't already done this, at how different those products turn out, right? We've done that, and I'd recommend that for anybody who's beginning this process, you will really understand the difference between yeast. So one thing to know is that yeast exists in the environment. It, it's on us, it's on the apples, it's in the, the pressing room, and it's in, and sometimes it, it, it's in your equipment if you, if you haven't sanitized it well enough. Uh, but, but basically, uh, there is a way to ferment cider without uh, adding yeast that we call that a wild ferment or a natural ferment. And that, that would be very specifically all those yeast you mentioned on the skin, on your pressing equipment, uh, in the air, in your facility, uh, that would be the yeast that would take over fermentation. Um, it can be some of the greatest cider you'll ever have because you get a lot of interesting other things, other organisms in there that add flavor and complexity. Uh, but in many cases, it can also become some of the worst stuff you've ever had. Um, and so if you don't want to take that risk with a wild ferment, um, we recommend doing a cultured yeast uh, or a store-bought yeast that would uh, kind of control that process a little bit more. Yeah, and there's a little bit of our philosophy coming through here. Uh, with a wild ferment, uh, again, I too have tried fantastic wild fermented products, but in general, with a wild ferment, you're letting nature decide what yeast to use to make your cider. And uh, with yeast being as important as it is for the outcome, we just believe very strongly in choosing what yeast makes our cider, right? Right. And all of these yeasts we have on, on display here, and then some, uh, these at some point were used either in wine uh, fermentation or in some cases cider fermentation. They were found to be really delicious and great yeast for that, that purpose. Uh, and someone captured that yeast at any given time cultivated it, and now we have it uh, being mass produced on this level. But these are things that were proven from history uh, as being great cider producers. Yeah, and you know, that's, I'm glad you mentioned that, Colin. We do have a collection here today that we'll go over briefly of uh, yeasts that are typically used for cider and wine. Uh, you can use any yeast, right? You could use a bread yeast, couldn't you? Sure. Yeah. Sure. You know, the, the question is, is that going to make a good cider for you? Uh, I've heard uh, of and we've experimented with beer yeasts. That is to say, yeasts that were cultured for the purpose of making a great beer. And generally, we haven't favored those over time. Some people might. Some people might. You can try that. And if, and if it makes the perfect cider for you, then go ahead and do it. Now, maybe Colin, since you're kind of uh, the expert in uh, yeast here, <laughs> you want to go a lot, Steve. I'm not sure, but <laughs> you want to go over a little bit some of these yeasts that you've chosen as your favorites. Sure. Uh, to, to, to yeah, taste. and and all the yeasts when we when we make a new cider, we always think about what do we want the finished product to be, uh, and many of these yeasts will add certain flavor profiles or aromas. Uh, and what we, we will often do is say, okay, well, we would like something tropical in this case. Uh, and every one of these yeast uh, companies uh, will have information either on the packet or on the website that suggests to you what flavor profiles they will add or um, what aromatic qualities they'll add to the finished product. Uh, and so we can, in some sense, you could almost design a cider with some of the characteristics that you like in cider based on what yeast you use. Uh, so in, in a very, um, th this first yeast, yeast here is uh, called Lalvin EC1118 or 1118. Uh, it's a champagne yeast, uh, wonderful product for kind of fermenting all the way to dryness, uh, giving you that beautiful kind of dry product, uh, not, not leaving a lot of uh, sweetness or acid, um, 
fruitiness. Uh, something like Lauban 71B, that's a great uh, for lowering acidity. Uh, so if you have a very tart cider, you want to lower it uh, in the process, you can use that. You've got another wine yeast there. Uh, you've got a couple of cider yeast here, a Y yeast, a White Labs. Um, and some of these add fruitiness, some of them add residual sugar, some add maybe a grapefruit note, some might add a tropical essence to it. So it's a lot of fun playing around with, with what you're gonna use. Yeah, and before you've, uh, before you've experimented with these and, and formed your own opinion, uh, you have to do what Colin suggested. Read the label, read the website, uh, see what the, the company that provides the yeast indicates uh, is going to be the characteristics of a product made with that yeast. Another reason to read the label, Colin, is for how to, how to use the yeast, right? Absolutely, every one of these might be a little bit different and you wanna follow the manufacturer's guidelines on that. Uh, so, it, for example, some of these yeasts, probably most of them are gonna require some type of nutrient. Uh, maybe the cider's not gonna provide enough of the zinc, calcium, uh, potassium that the, that the yeast needs and you might have to add some uh, you know, one of these maybe uh, simple yeast nutrient blends from uh, home brewer's place. Uh, but uh, yeah, so check the manufacturer. Also temperature is a big part of this. Uh, every one of these yeasts will have a, probably a different optimal temperature range. And if you're above or below that optimal temperature range, you're going to be stressing your yeast out, uh, which could lead to off flavors, off aromas, uh, things that you don't want. Yeah, to use a phrase that Colin likes to use, you're when you're making cider with a yeast, you're a yeast farmer, right? <laughs> and I didn't come up with that. I've heard that, read about it. Funny Other people have too. But uh, that, that just emphasizes the importance of following the instructions, using the yeast according to the manufacturer's instructions so you have a great final product in terms of your cider. So we brought a couple ciders here today that we'll uh, close with, right? Sure, sure. Got something called Barrel 44. Yeah. That's a, that's a taproom favorite here at number 12. This is a bourbon barrel aged cider made with? Uh, this is the champagne yeast, the Lauban EC 1118. Uh, and the reason we chose it for this product was we wanted something that wouldn't offer a lot of additional characteristics, just a clean, dry base product, which we then put into bourbon barrels and then it picks up a lot of that bourbon character uh, from the barrel. So we want that kind of clean slate with the yeast to then bring in some of the bourbon qualities of that uh, barrel aging. So how about here's to that? Cheers to that. Mm, that's fantastic. All right, happy cider making. Good luck. <laughs>